Hi everybody, this is Addis from Shonland. Today is September the 7th, Labor Day in the United States, but a working day for everybody else. And the guest today, or our guest today is Tine Tomazic, who is the CTO at Pippis Trail Vertical Solutions. Good afternoon to you, sir. Thank you for joining me. Hi to you all. And uh, the reason I wanted to talk with you, Tina, is because I saw something really interesting that you guys released this week about the NUUVA, which you call the NUVA. And maybe you can help our uh, guests and this, or our, our viewers here understand how you came to that name. Well, uh, NUVA is uh, Pipistrel's family of uh, cargo delivery vehicles. Uh, the biggest member that was unveiled a week ago is the V300 model. Um, because the sweet spot for its operation is what we call the double 300. 300 kilograms of payload for a distance of 300 kilometers. We do operate in the metric regime, so I'm sorry for the US friends, but it's uh, roughly 700 pounds or roughly 200 miles. But the vehicle is capable to go a much longer distance and also to carry uh, a payload up to 450, 60 kg, which is in the 1000 uh, pound class. Uh, if you carry less, then you get more distance out of it, just like any, any aeroplane. Um, the name NUVA is a combination of the two Latin words, nuvola, which is a cloud, and vemos, which means to, to come or to go. So it's uh, something that arrives uh, or goes in between the clouds. And I think it's quite appropriate for an aerial cargo delivery solution. It is a UAV, no pilot on board, uh, a winged drone, so a tandem wing configuration. Uh, most of the flight uh, is on wing-borne lift, so this is not a multi-copter, and uh, that is also where the efficiency comes from. So it's not to be mistaken for a small vehicle. The vehicle is actually in the two-ton class, uh, roughly 40 feet across on the main wingspan, roughly 30 feet long. So uh, adjusted to essentially be able to utilize every single heliport out there already, but it doesn't need a particularly prepared terrain. Uh, it's been designed also to land outside of the established infrastructure if, if desired or if this is what the mission demands. It's, it seems to be, a, a, the timing seems to be very good because given the fact that passenger traffic is not likely to recover really quickly, but demand for cargo is sky high to move cargo around. So I think that your timing on this seems to be really good. Um, we could not agree more. One has to know, however, that uh, Pipistrel actually had three, or still has, three major development direction on the electric flight front. Uh, after having achieved type certification for our electric trainer, the focus moves uh, on, the, on the cargo delivery platform, the NUVA, the NUVA V300. There is a parallel activity in the eVTOL segment, our air taxi vehicle uh, for the Uber type missions. We are one of the Uber partners and remain committed to this market slightly later on. We've unveiled uh, the vision for our product uh, last year in, in June at the Uber Elevate conference in Washington. And the third direction is the intercity mini liner, which is uh, a conventional takeoff and landing aircraft, but uh, completely zero emission um, with more seats than what an air taxi uh, could house. So roughly a 20 seat aeroplane. Um, we are prioritizing the cargo delivery NUVA V300 um, on two fronts. Uh, one, because of the regulatory developments, it appears to be that the landscape um, that will permit for autonomous cargo delivery missions simply arrives earlier than all the specifics that have to meet together to unlock um, intra-urban, so inside uh, the big cities operations with air taxis uh, that's one and for the second time um, logistics have never been more actual or more important than just uh, what 2020 has showed to us so especially being able to reach to reach fast and far uh, where infrastructure isn't uh, going from hubs maybe logistics hubs maybe airports or multimodal hubs um, venturing a few hundreds of miles uh, where you today only have roads or not even that, perhaps in island states, um, is, is a very contemporary matter 
and will continue to be even more important as the, the e-commerce and the necessity of uh, prioritized cargo delivery uh, becomes even more important. Now, a uh, fact is that we are not trying to compete with uh, last mile deliveries on a shoebox type of a package. Uh, we applaud Amazon and Wing and uh, UPS for already obtaining their FAA operational approvals. Uh, we are in for much larger capacity and much longer distance. So think of the new V300 more as a flying delivery van than a delivery moped or literally the last mile uh, courier vehicle. So it's for the intermediate segment, not for the last mile. And we see vast opportunities in different markets, not only logistics, perhaps also oil and gas and other specific uh, ventures that need priority parts, cargo, goods or perishables delivery just because of the nature of their business. It seems to be a very interesting segment, um, probably competing with helicopters that are doing that kind of work now. And the helicopters probably doing it a lot more expensive. Well, uh, it's quite obvious that uh, people who can afford to do that are conducting such kind of missions with helicopters today. Uh, going from oil rig resupplies or supplying mountain huts, uh, by the way, the Nuva V300 is uh, designed a bit differently from an air taxi vehicle. It can operate also at uh, very high elevations, much higher than uh, the urban centers of the world, which are pretty much 6,000 feet elevation or, or below. Uh, so we can uh, support missions uh, into the, the mountainous terrains as well. Um, yeah, when, when one puts one and one together, you see that uh, helicopters are a very useful tool, but unfortunately on the expensive side. And uh, everything on the NUVA, uh, the look, feel, practicality, what it does or doesn't, is subject to unlocking a, a 10x, so a 10 time improvement in the operating cost over helicopters. So a dramatically, dramatically lower operating cost. Uh, because the vehicle is hybrid electric, because most of the time it flies on wing-borne lift and because of parts commonality and uh, much less complex mechanics than what the helicopter has. You know, it occurs to me as you're describing this, um, there surely is going to be um, also military use for this kind of technology. Um, so Pipistrel is not exactly a newcomer into the military segment. We do have our, also our own surveillance platform business. Um, there's been several quite prominent uh, communications uh, in the first part of this year where our aircraft uh, fly and what they do. So uh, yes, we also remain committed to continue serving that segment, uh, but never weaponizing uh, our platforms. So as long as it is logistics or support, I think the military should recognize the strong points of uh, eVTOLs uh, that are able to bring considerable loads of cargo for considerable distances. Uh, so absolutely, and uh, this is also one of the driving factors as to why we decided to make the vehicle uh, an all-weather capable vehicle uh, right out of the box. Um, how long before this, air, this vehicle is licensed to, to go to work? We are targeting an entry into revenue service in 2023 with uh, representative demonstrations about a year prior. So inside 2022, uh, the regulatory environment permits for interesting demonstration missions, which could already be practical. Uh, they just shouldn't be focused about revenue generation, but instead on collective uh, experience uh, in order to unlock uh, a commercial, commercial class uh, of operating approvals. Can you share with us any um, reaction from the market so far by way of, um, let's say, target customers or, or market reaction? So um, we've been seeing inquiries from all over the world and uh, across a very widespread, uh, let's say, composition of businesses from logistics companies to people who are in the offshore delivery business from oil and gas, um, also airlines, uh, people who do feeding services today, 
for established logistics companies. Um, I mean, you have to know that the vehicle has been out in the wild for about a week, uh, almost exactly a week today. And uh, already we are almost overwhelmed with the amount of response and questions uh, we get. And the questions are not unlike yours. So I'm happy that we are able to, to address a few of, of the typical questions also as part of this discussion. Is there anything you can tell us about what you anticipate the price for the vehicle to be? So the, the typical customer uh, will understand very well that the total operating cost of the vehicle is what really matters here. So we are not uh, discussing what is the upfront purchase vehicle cost, uh, but I can say that uh, the target operating cost for the ton mile is below 2.5 US dollars, which is uh, quite attractive um, and will permit this vehicle to be integrated in a number of systems, uh, also the ones that are cost sensitive. Uh, one has to appreciate the fact that uh, the vehicle is capable and routinely flies as a vertical takeoff and landing machine. So it's far less dependent on, on, on runways or completely independent from runways than something else. Uh, and it's also not dependent on uh, the fact where the electric charging infrastructure uh, is or isn't, uh, thanks to the fact that the propulsion system is, is hybrid. So it unlocks uh, a very interesting potential for the operators. You, you mentioned hybrid there. Can you explain that for a minute? What, how does this kind of work? Well, without uh, revealing too much of the secret sauce, the vehicle has uh, eight electric motors uh, driving, driving rotors for the vertical takeoff uh, arrivals and departures. So for the power lift side, and it has a dedicated combustion, uh, super high efficiency engine uh, for the crews. So nine engines in total, and all of the engines, also the electric ones, uh, which are courtesy of Pipistrel, are already type certified, which is a major, major advantage of this concept um, relative to the rest. So. Uh, we are essentially leveraging technology which we have built up as part of the Velis Electro type certification program uh, and the, the, the overall developmental risk on the, on the powertrain side is very, very small since the components have been trialed and proven in, in many other applications for almost a decade. That sounds great. Last question. How long do you think it takes to um, recharge? The, the eight electric, well, the batteries for the eight electric models. So on an out and return mission, the recharge would happen uh, in, uh, inside the magic half hour turnaround time. So we did design the vehicle so that by the time you unload it and load it back, also your battery is ready to go. Uh, the battery capacity is supporting also missions where you do not have to recharge at every uh, landing location or takeoff location. Uh, you can do two hops in between uh, in order to unlock uh, certain operations to areas where there may not be a charging infrastructure. This makes the operations slightly, ever so slightly more expensive because you are going through a, a battery state of charge range where the battery cycle life would be smaller than uh, in a situation where you are able to recharge at every location, but this does not uh, preclude flying from happening. And so the if you want to have lowest cost of operation for every takeoff and landing, you spend about 20 minutes on the charging, which is also the expected time frame uh, between, let's say, between hops uh, or missions or flights that this vehicle will be undertaking in a, in a days of work. So it's not too dissimilar from turning around. Right regular cargo feeder today. In fact, uh, we are trying to match the concept of operation that people are already used to in the industry. The combustion engine doesn't do any of the charging. It's only, no. pro only propulsion. Uh, there are several modes where the uh, combustion engine can step into a role of a charger, but if one wants to be, uh, the, let's say, operating at the lowest possible cost of operation and ton per mile matrix, uh, then the two systems are operated in disconnected mode. This is, however, not the only mode of operation. Tine, thank you so much for your time. That was really interesting. You're welcome.